as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Puff Rice. It's nice. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin' that Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. Did you hear that? Shot from guns. That's your tip-off to the breakfast cereal that's deliciously crisp and tender. Yes, eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat every morning because they're puffed to perfection, full of swell natural nut-like flavor. Top with milk or cream and fruit and go to it. You just can't beat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Lefty Nash was a big man and a tough one. He had been a lumberman in his younger days in Vancouver. But a couple of years after his marriage, he had left his wife and baby boy and went to the gold fields of California. At first, Lefty's intentions were good. He'd make his fortune and then send for his little family. The fortune never materialized. And Lefty, who had wandered from one location to another, neglected to keep in touch with his wife. When he finally returned to Vancouver, he learned his wife had died and the whereabouts of his son wasn't known. He discussed his troubles at the time with the local constable. Well, my boy is ten years old now, constable. His name is Dennis, Dennis Nash. I've searched the town for him, but well, I didn't have any luck. Well, I'll do what I can to help you, Mr. Nash. If I find any trace of the boy, I'll let you know. Well, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I'm stopping at the Straits Hotel for the time being. Well, like I said, Mr. Nash, I'll get in touch with you if I learn anything about the boy. In the meantime, you keep in touch with me. Right. Goodbye, Constable. Weeks passed, and there was no word of Dennis. Lefty, discouraged, drifted from the town and finally reached Seattle. He was broke and bitter when he fell in with bad companions who persuaded Lefty that easy money could be had for the taking. One robbery led to another... And Lefty became a tough, hard man, and his name became notorious throughout the Northwest country. More years passed, and when gold was discovered in the Yukon Territory, Lefty and two cronies traveled to Skagway, the gateway to the Yukon. Then, as winter moved in, they followed the trail north. We better stop a few minutes and rest the dogs. Ho, ho, you How much farther do we have to go to reach South Kirk, Lefty? It's a few miles, Art. I wonder how long it'll be before that prospector finds out we discovered the hiding place he had for his gold. We'll be plenty <laughs> far away before he misses it. He was out cutting more wood when we took it, Squint. Say, I learned Whitehorse that the prospectors around Selkirk come to town loaded with gold dust on Saturday nights and head for the cafe there. Yeah. Maybe we could take a chance on holding up the cafe Saturday night. We could use bandanas to mask our faces... Then hit the trail for Dawson right after. Yeah, we'll think it over, Squint. Well, let's get moving, Lefty. I'm getting cold. Yeah. Must! Must! When they arrived in Selkirk, Lefty and his two companions stayed at a waterfront hotel and made plans for the cafe holdup. On Saturday night, they stopped their dog team alongside the building. And then, using bandanas as masks, the three men entered. <laughs> It's a hold-up. Line up all here and reach for the ceiling. 
Fellas, go get the cash and gold and make it quick. Sure, Lefty. Come on. Right. Hey, he called the leader, Lefty. Must be Lefty Nash. Yeah. Don't let them get away with this man. Get him. Get him out. The sudden retaliation by the men in the cafe took the crooks by surprise. Lefty saw both squinted art fall wounded, and his one thought was to escape. Emptying his gun, he turned and fled, slamming the door behind him. A few minutes later, the man from the cafe entered the office of young constable Denny Carter. Constable! What is it? Something wrong? I thought I heard shooting and was just going to investigate. Three crooks tried to hold up the cafe, constable. But we got two of them, and the other got away. You better come right over there and pick them up. Soon as the docs fixed them. They're both wounded. I'm ready. Let's go. Was anyone else hurt? Yes, yeah, several. And I think one fellow's dead. Took a bullet from the crook that got away. Now, that's bad. As soon as the other two are taken care of, I'll trail the one who got away. Constable, I know this is your first assignment, the inconstable here in Selkirk. Let me warn you. The fellow who got away is thought to be Lefty Nash, a desperate killer. It's my job to trail him and bring him in for murder. Better wait till you have help, then. No, no. Delay might take away any chance of catching him. I'll send word to the constable at Bear Landing to watch my district while I'm gone. Uh, you have any idea which way the killer went? Well, I'd say he was heading north. I'll try to pick up his trail. And I'll not come back until I catch him and bring him in. An hour later, the constable, Denny Carter, picked up Lefty's trail and started out in pursuit. Mush! Mush, you hussy! Mush! It was later that night when Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police and his great dog, Yukon King, arrived in Selkirk. Preston's first stop was at the general store. Come along, fella. Well, Sergeant Preston and King, I'm mighty glad to see you again. Thanks, Frank. Thought I'd pick up a few supplies before I barged in on the constable of this cabin. Hasn't anyone told you the constable isn't in town? Isn't? I know. We just arrived and stopped off here first. Well, some crooks tried to hold up the cafe earlier. Two of them were wounded and caught. The other one got away. Huh? But before he left, he killed a fellow at the cafe. Denny left to trail him, saying he wouldn't come back without the murder. Oh, I wish I'd arrived sooner. Sure. Uh, to my way of thinking, young Constable Denny is risking his neck going after such a desperate character as Lefty Nash. Lefty Nash? You mean Denny is trailing Lefty Nash? That he is, Sergeant. That is serious. I'll take supplies, Frank, and I'm picking up Denny's trail right away. I must get to him before he catches up with Nash. I hope you do. Uh, hey, look, Sergeant, let me go with you. I might be of help before you're through. Well, all right, but let's hurry. I don't want to waste time. Within a short time, Sergeant Preston and Frank picked up Denny's trail near the cafe. With the great dog king leading the way, they started out the north trail. On king! On you, husky! I'm glad you decided to try to catch up to Denny. Nash is a desperate killer, and Denny isn't experienced enough. It isn't that exactly, Frank. Tell me... You remember the widow Carter who came here and opened a boarding house some years ago? Sure I do. It was about 12 years, as I recollect. I just opened up a small trading post. She was Denny's mother. Denny was with her at the time, but she wasn't his mother. She wasn't? No. Mrs. Carter applied for adoption papers for Denny. One of my first assignments as a rookie was to interview her. Say, I remember now. You came in and asked me about her at the time and said she wanted to adopt the boy who was staying with her. That's right. Well, it seems before that, Denny's mother lived at Mrs. Carter's place in Vancouver. She died. Mrs. Carter kept Denny, brought him here when she moved to Selkirk. He took the name Denny Carter. Does he know he's an adopted son? Yes. That's all he does know about it, Frank. But I learned from Mrs. Carter before she died that Denny's father was named Lefty Nash. Lefty Nash, eh? Well, now... I... <laughs> Lefty Nash, you say? Great saints. He must never know, so keep it to yourself. Of course. You know, I'd never mention it to anyone. I know that, Frank. But are you certain Denny's father and that killer are the same man? There might have been another man of that name, Sergeant. The records show that Lefty Nash was born in Vancouver. He married there about 23 years ago and had a son named Dennis. You don't say. Lefty went to the States... His wife died while he was away, and his boy Dennis disappeared about the time Mrs. Carter came here with Denny. No one except the inspector and I, and of course you, know that Dennis Carter is really Dennis Nash. Poor lad. Good thing he doesn't know. He's a fine chap. Yes, and a good officer. But what you don't realize, Frank, 
is that he's trailing his own father and one may kill the other. Holy mackerel. I never thought of that. That's why we have to find Denny before they meet. Unkind! On your husband! Meantime, about two miles ahead of Denny, Lefty Nash turned off the trail and stopped behind a low ridge. Ho, ho, ho! Well, you mangy mutter. Guess I have to give you a rest if I hope to make it to Dawson. Lefty took a blanket and moved under a ledge where he lay down to rest. He was out of the cold wind. The warmth of the blanket caused him to doze for a while. But later, a distant sound brought him to full consciousness, and he sat up suddenly. <laughs> Dogs. Somebody must be trailing me. Just light enough for anyone to see my tracks leading in here. I better get going away from here and fast. All right, you lazy hounds, up! A short time later, Denny reached the point where Lefty had turned and gone to the ridge. He stopped his dog team a moment. Ho, ho, hold on, boy. Hold on. Turned off here and went toward that ridge. I'll leave the team here and go on foot. He may try to ambush me if he hears the team moving in. With gun in hand, Denny followed the tracks. He cautiously approached the place where Lefty had stopped. And then, as he eased around the end of the ridge, he saw that no one was there. Uh, he stopped here to rest. There's where the dogs buried in the snow. I... Uh, something over there. He left a blanket behind, and it still has warmth. It means he isn't very far ahead of me. I'll get back to the team. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and Frank were making much better time than Denny had because the intelligent Husky King kept them on the trail. Do you think Denny caught up with him yet, Sergeant? I doubt it, Frank. I hope not. That's the way I feel about it. If he presses Lefty, he may run into an ambush. I hope he realizes that. I hate to think of anything like that happening. So do I. On King! On you, Husky! We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. see that young Sergeant Billy and Sandra Bell of Dawson City are playing Yukon Treasure Hunt today. Well, yes, sir. Do you know of a treasure in some secret cache? Mm, let's see now. Let me think. Why, sure I do. Well, why don't you give us some clues? And we'll try to find it. Okay. Well, the first clue is a fur trapper's kitchen cupboard. Bet I've got it. It's a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. I fooled you there, Bill. Guess again. Is the treasure inside the package? Oh, you're getting warm, Sandra. If you mean those crisp, delicious, king-size grains of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Well, maybe it's those food values you tell us about. You're getting warmer, Billy, because it's a hidden treasure you can't see. Like those extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron, furnished by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Oh, gosh. I'm stumped. Well, the best clue you could find would be when you pour yourself a heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or rice, top it with milk or cream and fruit, and then take a big, luscious mouthful. You can't see it, but you can... Taste it! I've got it! It's the flavor! Right! It's the sweet, tempting, nut-like flavor that tastes so good you want more and more. Yes, sirree, all you fellas and girls will find a real taste treasure when you go for the famous breakfast cereals Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. The breakfast cereals shot from gun. Now to continue. Lefty had a poor dog team to begin with, and the dogs, through periods of hunger and mistreatment, had lost their strength and stamina for long trips at a fast pace. Lefty noticed the dogs falter from time to time. Finally, when one of them fell from exhaustion, the others stopped and sank in the snow beside him. Oh, what the... Come on, get up, you weak-kneed coyotes. Get moving, do you hear? I thunder out. Oh, what's the use? They're no good to me now. Hey... Someone's still on my trail. Must be a Mountie. They use good dogs. I'll have to make it on foot. 
I'll move that hill off to the right. Lefty went over the hill and found a long stretch of level, snow-covered land before him. At first, he had moved at a fast pace, but soon his steps slowed as his leg muscles ached to rest. But he knew he had to go on. Gasping for breath, Lefty forced himself forward, trying to put more distance between himself and the man he knew must be trailing him. As the faint, cold light of the Arctic sun edged over the horizon, he looked back just as a figure topped the hill behind him. A red coat. Mount ears follow me. I have to find some place to stand against him. I got it. Oh, he's out of gun range now, and so am I, so that's lucky. But I better get moving. Slowly, Lefty moved on. Meantime, Denny's youth and vigor favored him as he slowly moved closer to the fleeing killer. He noticed that Lefty had swung to the right and was making for what appeared to be some large boulders. You better try to cut him off or you'll be able to hold me back indefinitely. Then he too swung off at an angle and increased his pace in hopes of cutting in between Lefty and the place to which the killer was heading. In his determination to outwit Lefty, Denny kept his eyes on the fleeing crook, neglecting to watch the nearby terrain. Suddenly, he felt the ground give way under him as a thin crust over a narrow ravine broke under his weight. <laughs> then the young Mountie was flung downward to the bottom of the narrow ravine and lay there stunned. Lefty, who was about a city block away from the young Mountie, turned as Denny yelled and saw the red-coated figure disappear from sight. Hey, Jiminy, he must have stepped down to a crust covering a ravine back there. If I go back, I could finish him off and get his dog team. And that's what I'll do. Uh, gun's ready. It took Lefty in his winded condition quite uh, some time to reach the edge of the ravine where Denny had fallen. Finally, he moved cautiously to the edge and looked down. Uh, he's just coming to... Hey, you down there. I got you covered. I... I lost my gun. I... I'm unarmed. Good. That makes it easier. I'm gonna plug you and then go back and take your dog team, Mountie. Now, wait. Wait, listen to me. Lefty watched as Denny struggled to his feet. The young man's parka hood had fallen back, and Denny brushed the snow out of his hair with his gloved hand, then looked upward at the leering killer above. A thin beam of sunlight struck the thick, curly, reddish-brown hair and lighted his youthful face as he spoke. Oh, I... I sprained an ankle when I fell. Help me up. I... I can't follow you any further. I wouldn't leave you here to die. Uh, you'll die before I leave, fella. Hey, it seems to me you've been mixed up in my life before this somewhere. No. No, I haven't. You sure look familiar, but that doesn't matter. It's too cold to stand here gabbing with a mountie. Right now, I'll... Lefty raised his gun again, and then hesitated. He looked down at the boyish face staring up at him, at the large, steady brown eyes just a few feet below the edge of the ravine. Lefty brushed a hand across his face as the gun wavered in his grasp. Lefty, I came after you because you killed a man in Selkirk. Maybe you've killed others, I don't know. And now you intend to kill me. But you can't win, Lefty. The past will catch up with you and you'll be hanged sooner or later. Oh. Lefty didn't answer, but stood as if in a uh. trance. The young Mountie spoke of the past. Uh. And it was the past Lefty was reminded of as he looked at Denny. Of someone he knew. Someone he had known well. But who? Who? At first I was afraid. But I'm not now, Lefty. Go on, get it over with. I know killing means nothing to you. Shut up! Shut up, you dirty red coat! Momentarily, rage swept over Lefty Nash, but still he held his fire. Some strange force seemed to hold him back. Something that caused him to sweat in spite of the cold, moaning wind. Lefty shivered as the wind seemed to bring thoughts of the past. Thoughts of when he was with his young wife and child. Gosh, honey, isn't he some boy, though? Look at him. Only two years old, and yet as strong and smart as a five-year-old. Someday just like me. You wait and see. Lefty closed his eyes a moment. Oh. And then his confused mind took him back. Back to the time he was leaving home. Oh, look, Mary, honey, it's for you and our boy. My son, Denny. I'll make a fortune in Golden, California. And then I'll come back or, or I'll send for you. Please, honey, you must understand. It's for you and for him that I'm going. Look, I'll get rich. I know it. I want him to have everything. 
No. No, I don't want to think back. I... You're not going to shoot. Help me out. You're feverish, Lefty. Talking to yourself. You'll die, too, if you're sick. Sick? What are you talking about? I'm just thinking. That's all. I don't want to make any slip and have more Mounties after me. And anyhow, I'd like to watch you squirm. But Lefty saw the young man below him wasn't squirming. He seemed not to be afraid. As if he knew somehow that Lefty couldn't quite pull the trigger. And then an inner voice seemed to whisper to him. Huh? An inner voice forced into his mind by the moaning wind. You go near Lefty. You just as you were when you left little Dennis and Mary. Never saw him again, Lefty, never. Yeah, look closer. That's you. 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 Stop it. Stop it, see, I hear it. It's a lie. I'm just seeing things, that's all. What's the matter with you, Lefty? You help me up, I'll take you back to a warm room and a doctor. You're sick, Lefty. Ah, you're to blame. Somehow you're making me see things that aren't so. You're a dirty, poor cat of a mountain. And I'm going to fix you right now, do you hear? Right now! Oh, shoot! Stop my arm! Oh, the gun, I, I dropped it, but I'll still be able to oh, get you! No! No, dog, help! Take him off! Hunting, convoy, watch him. Oh, Sergeant, Sergeant Preston, I'm in the ravine. Lenny, oh. you all right? Yes, except for a sprained oh. ankle. We'll get you out. Uh, Under hand, oh. Frank. Sure will. I'll hold you while you reach down and grasp, Lenny. All right. Lenny, grab my hand. I... A moment later, Denny stood beside Preston and Frank. Lefty watched him with feverish eyes as the young Mountie spoke. Oh, Sergeant, you saved my life. Lefty was just about to shoot me when you fired at him. I know, Denny. Oh, I couldn't have it. It wasn't right to leave Mary and Denny. What? What's he talking about? I... I thought he said my name. Lefty Nash seems to be sick as well as wounded, Denny. He's delirious, I think. He talked crazy while he held a gun on me. He huh? did? Yeah. He started to shoot me long before you got here. Then he kept staring at me and talking to himself. No, man. I told him he was sick and he flew into a rage. Oh. I'm glad he was out of his head. Otherwise, I'd be dead now. Frank, go bring the dog sled, will you? I'll stay here with Lefty and Denny until you get back. Sure. Isn't going to take long. Frank brought back the dog sled, and in due time, Denny and Lefty Nash were taken back to Selkirk. Lefty was found to have a severe case of pneumonia, and it was Denny who came to Sergeant Preston at their cabin with a message. Sergeant, the doctor wants us both to come to his place where Lefty Nash is under guard. All right, Denny, I got my things on. We'll go right over. When the two Mounties arrived, the doctor requested that Preston go in first, alone. A moment later, Sergeant Preston stood beside Lefty's bed. Lefty, I'm Sergeant Preston. I... I don't deserve any favors, Sergeant. I... I know that, but I'm dying. Take it easy. You, you called him Denny. I, I remember that much. Tell me, who is he? Your son, Lefty. What? But he doesn't know. My... My boy. And I tried to kill him. But something held me back. What it was, I don't know. The way he looked at me when, when he was in that ravine, I, I went crazy. Easy, man, easy. Could I see him? I'm not going to tell him. I'll tell him, then. Denny, yes, sir. come in, will you? He's dying, Denny, and he's delirious. We know he's a killer, but, well... Sure. Sure, I know. Lefty, this is Constable Carter, Denny. My boy. I... I didn't mean to. I, I'm sorry, my boy. So sorry. Oh, that's all right, Lefty. Forget it. And you a Mountie. Oh, that that's fine. I'm proud. Sure. 
He's gone, Danny. It's strange he's talking to me like that, Sergeant. Poor fella. As bad as he was, I can't help feeling sorry for him. You know, maybe if... If things had been different, if he'd married and settled down... That's right, Danny. Things might have been different, who can tell? Maybe a son would have been all that Lefty needed to keep him straight. Well, he's paid his debt to society, and this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Say there, what's your favorite breakfast treat? Why, of course. It's Quaker Puffs rice and Quaker Puffs wheat. Oh, mine too. They taste so good. Yes, everyone in the family, Dad too, goes for the toasty, nut-like flavor of good natural grain. The sun-ripened natural flavor that old Mother Nature puts into it. Well, you see... Daddy doesn't like anything too sweet. But we like things real sweet. And that's the beauty of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Every member of the family can sweeten them with sugar to suit their own special taste. They're never coated with factory sweetening. No wonder everybody likes the one shot from guns. And you know, because they're exploded up to eight times normal size, they're crisp and tender as nuts in November. Every bite is so crisp and crunchy. Yes, with the sealed inner lining in the big red and blue packages, Quaker puffed wheat and rice are kept as crisp as can be. And mothers, remember those extra food values in every delicious spoonful your family eats. Those restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So every morning, let the whole family pour out big bowlfuls of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The one shot, shot from, from guns. guns. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, an old sourdough named Johnny Elk sent word to headquarters that he's afraid that he'll be murdered. He wants to see an officer at once. Johnny's afraid? Johnny Elk is a rich man, Sergeant. Someone may be trying to steal his gold. I'll start for Wildcat River at once, sir. You'd better go geared for trouble. Johnny's gold is already in the possession of killers who murdered Johnny Elk and two Indians to get it. When they meet Sergeant Preston in a deep canyon, they are determined to kill the fourth man in order to make their escape. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from Gun. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, fellas and girls, if you want to grow big and strong, eat Quaker Oats often. You get more strength, more energy from oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So tomorrow, start eating delicious Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. Listen tomorrow at this same time to the Green Hornet, brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again, delicious Orange Crush. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.